Revenge is a dish best served cold. Across 1,065 pages. <laughs> everyone, welcome to Bound in Prose, the booktube channel for those with very eclectic tastes in literature. I am your host, Matt, and today we are going to be starting our third video in the series, Let's Read a Classic. So for this one, if you've watched my April um, reading update, you know which one we're going to be going through, also if you've read the title. But anyways, uh, I thought we would tackle a chunker this time around. Uh, so we're going to be reading The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. So I'm actually going into this one knowing uh, quite a bit about it, um, what the story is about, sort of like the major beats. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the movie adaptation that starred uh, Jim Caviezel and Guy Pearce. Um, one of my favorite films. Um, it's been getting a lot of reactions on YouTube, and I really enjoy watching those, and so I kind of thought... Let's go ahead and it's time to read the book. This has been sitting on my shelf for a long time. Um, it's it's definitely one of those that I knew was going to be um, a challenge it's simply due to its length, but I was also afraid that it might be um, just kind of difficult to read and understand and follow. But um, anyways, I've heard that the book is quite different. And so um, I'm interested to see... Um, how it differs from the movie. Um, so yeah, uh, it, if you don't know much about this one, this is one of the more like well-known revenge tales. And so the main character is Edmund Dantes, and he is imprisoned, um, wrongfully imprisoned. He has a couple guys in his life that basically falsify some evidence um, and get him arrested and sent to prison where he stays for I want to say like 12 or 14 years and um, whenever he gets out he finds a treasure and he decides that he's going to use this treasure to kind of elevate himself in society and uh, find ways to get his revenge on the people that had him wrongfully imprisoned. There's a lot of um, like adventure in this book, um, a lot of maybe action is what I've heard. And so if you, if you already know, Alexandre Dumas also wrote the three musketeers. So he's kind of got that swashbuckling adventure sort of style. So I'm really excited to get into this. Um, so why don't we jump on in? I will update you when I'm a couple hundred pages into it or something. <laughs> time for our first official update so it's been about a mm, five days or so and i've started count of monte cristo i am currently on page 213 so because this is such a long book i thought i would kind of update every couple of hundred pages or so instead of every hundred pages and that way maybe this video won't be an hour and a half so anyways so we've kind of gotten past all of the preliminary stuff in this book. We've met Edmund Dantes, and we've met the gentleman who have him wrongfully imprisoned. A um, lot of French names, so I am going to apologize in advance if I mispronounce them. But um, Edmund it has just gotten back from this voyage and uh, went on to the island of Elba because their captain contracted a uh, fever or got really ill and so they were trying to get him help and they run across Napoleon Bonaparte who gives Dantes this letter and wants him to like take it um take it back and and give it to this person and so anyways turns out that this person is one of his agents and this letter is basically this conspiracy to get Napoleon back into power um, his, one of his shipmates, um, Danglar, um, gets with this other person named Fernand, 
um, who is cousin to um, uh, Edmund Dantes's like lover or his like fiance uh, Mercedes, and so they and falsified this evidence, and then you find out that the person who is I don't know, judging basically uh, the case against Dantes, his father is the one that was supposed to pick up this letter. And so he decides to have Edmund imprisoned so that nobody finds out that his father is in cahoots with Napoleon. And so Edmund's been taken to um, the Chateau d'If, which is this prison on an island. And he's there for 14 years. He meets an abbey. Um, an Italian abbey that kind of like helps him to like get more knowledgeable and, and learn and kind of teach him um, a lot of the stuff that he didn't really know. So anyways, he's he ends up escaping and joining up with some smugglers and uh, he has just gotten the um, the treasure at Monte Cristo, the treasure of Sparta, which the abbey knew about and said, you know, if I'm not going to be able to go get it, like, it's yours. You go get, you go take care of it. Or, you know, get it. And so, Dantes went to the Isle of Monte Cristo and got the treasure. And now he has come back and started to kind of learn what happened to the people that he um, knew before he left. Finding out what happened to his dad. Finding out what happened to Mercedes and Fernand and... So yeah, so we're at sort of that point in the book. So, so far I am really enjoying it. It is very readable. I was a little bit afraid that it was going to be maybe a little bit difficult to follow. I just kind of had that classical bias going into it. It's like, I didn't find the movie version to be very difficult to follow. Um, and so, but you never know jumping into a classic if the language is going to be a little like so old school that it's just kind of like, you zone out on it. Um, but no, I'm, I'm finding this to be really approachable. I like the translation. And so, yeah, that's where we're at right now. I have the rest of the day off. It is the day after Easter and I don't have to go back to school till tomorrow. So we're going to spend the afternoon getting a little bit further through Count of Monte Cristo. I will check back in with you soon. Okay, hello everyone. It is about um, 7.15 <clears throat> in the evening. I uh, taught a private lesson on saxophone and then had some dinner and then decided to watch a couple YouTube videos. Um, I am about to get all situated for the evening and read some more of The Count of Monte Cristo. The stuff that I read this afternoon was pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me, pretty good. And uh, Dantes is kind of taking care of Monsieur Morel, who owned the ferry on that he was the bo the boat that um, Dantes was given given the uh, captainship before he was imprisoned, and so that was a really good sequence. Um, so I'm interested to see what we got coming up. Well, hello everyone. It's been a couple of days since my last update. I was teaching this week, and I was able to read a little bit more in Count of Monte Cristo, a couple chapters a night, and today I have decided I really need to clean my house. So I have put in my Raycon earbuds, not sponsored, um, and I am going to listen to some of the audiobook um, as I clean. So I am around the part where they're at the carnival in Rome, and... <clears throat> Albert has been captured by Luigi Vampa, and Franz has gone to ask the Count for help in getting him back. So, I don't know, it's kind of funny knowing that the Count is kind of pulling all of these strings and these kids are playing right into his, his plans. But anyways, I'm really enjoying it, so I will check in with you in a bit. 
Okay, so cleaning is done for the day, thank goodness. Um, yeah, I really needed to do that, so feeling much better with that. I was able to uh, listen to the audiobook for Count of Monte Cristo for most of the day. Um, so I am just about to page 400 in my copy. Um, I'm going to get cleaned up and snuggle down for the evening, read a little bit more, and then I'll sit and chit-chat about everything that's happened in the book so far, kind of give a an official update. So I'll talk to you in a bit. Alrighty, y'all, time for the next update. So <clears throat> I spent quite a bit of time yesterday listening to the audiobook, reading some more of The Count of Monte Cristo, and I am currently on page 443. So we are approaching halfway. So we've kind of gotten through the next section of the book. So to me, the first section is all about um, Dantes's betrayal and his time in prison and the escape. Um, and so now we have kind of moved through the second part of this, which is um, he's gotten out and he's setting himself up as the Count of Monte Cristo, and he has started to befriend the sons of the men who betrayed him. So Albert and Franz and those people. So he has kind of like gotten himself back into society. He's just now purchased a house and now it seems like we are starting to move into this next part where the betrayers come back in and or come back into the story and Dantes is finally like face to face with them again. And so it's been really good. Um, really enjoying it. Um, Definitely, I mean, well, obviously, but I'm definitely getting way more of the backstory and the history of different characters. And there's a lot more characters than there are in the movie with Jim Caviezel and Guy Pearce. Um, there was a section, I don't really want to, like, spoil it, but there was a section with hit, with um, Dantes's servant that he has, Bertuccio, I believe was his name, and he was telling Dantes this whole story concerning um, Monsieur Villefort, who was the magistrate that um, ha played a large role in imprisoning um, Dantes. And so I won't spoil what that story is, but I was really shocked that that was one of the turns in, in the book. It's very different from the movie, and so in a way it was a little bit of a letdown, but... I mean, that's, that's okay. Um, but overall, no, I'm still very much enjoying it. Um, through the second part of the book, I did kind of have to, like, stop and, like, okay, am I getting it right that Dantes is playing all of these different characters? I mean, he's the Count of Monte Cristo, he's Sinbad the Sailor, and, you know, he's set up, you know, this, um, relationship with the bandit Luigi Vampa, and so there's a lot of, like, I was just wanting to make sure that I had it all straight in my head, and so far it seems like I have. Um, I would go and like check chapter summaries just to make sure, and I was like, okay, yeah, that's exactly what I thought was going on. So, but no, uh, still very much enjoying this book, and I think, t well, today I have to travel a little bit. I have to be in the car for a couple of hours. So I am going to jump over and listen to The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon while I'm driving. And then whenever I get to my destination, maybe this evening I'll read a little bit more of Count of Monte Cristo. We'll just see how things go. So I'll check back in with you around page 600 or so. So anyways, talk to you soon. So I've been driving for about an hour. I listened to a couple of chapters in Priory of the Orange Tree. And I had to make a little bit of a stop. I just can't help myself. And this is why I should never stop at Barnes & Noble. So I got Dune Messiah and Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. So, just a little treat. Anyways, about to uh, get back on the road. 
Well, hello everyone. It's been a few days since I've done any sort of update. <clears throat> I didn't read very much um, the earlier part of this week. I just kind of visited with family and taught and and came home and went to sleep. And so now I'm back at my primary residence and I uh, spent the day like teaching and doing some other stuff. And now I'm going to spend the evening getting through some more of the Count of Monte Cristo. I am on chapter 51. Uh, it's called The Morel Family. And it is on page 483. So I have got my Raycons in. And I'm going to listen to um, a LibriVox recording, which is in the public domain, as they always remind you. Um, I'm going to listen to that audiobook. And yeah, I will... Check back in with you soon. Okay, been reading for a few hours, and <clears throat> I am now on to chapter 55, which is The Rise and Fall of the Stocks. And so, um, yeah, a, some... Odd chapters tonight. I don't know that I totally got all of the subtext of what was going on. Um, there was a chapter that was talking about toxicology um, and poisonings. And then there was a chapter where a bunch of the characters were at the opera. And um, the Count has this Greek lady with him that is his slave, he says. And... But she's like dudded up like a princess and they're just, uh, it's just like kind of, I don't know, feels like just you're, you're sitting in the, hi Kyrie, you're sitting in the aristocracy of the time and just kind of what, what they're doing and the Count is <clears throat> trying to basically infiltrate their society and he's kind of setting himself up to be, like, this godlike figure. He just knows so much, and he always has, like, you know, the most knowledge about anything and everything. Um, but I think a lot of people are maybe becoming suspicious of him in a lot of ways. They always say he's a singular man, which basically means he's very strange. And so, I don't know, but he can tell that his plans are like falling into place and he's sowing the seeds that he's going to use to like you know get his revenge so anyways i think that's about enough for the for the night i gotta get up and drive to arkansas in the morning and so i think well i really like i'm, I'm enjoying this but i want to get to golden sun and purity by jonathan franzen so i think i'm going to focus at least for a little while on finishing up Count of Monte Cristo. I'm about halfway through it, so I think I'm going to put a lot of time and effort into focusing on, on getting further into this one. So, anyways, that's it. I will talk to you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. All right, hello, everyone. It is Sunday. Um, I did some more reading in Count of Monte Cristo this week, and I've made my way through quite a bit of it. I'm up to, like, page 718 right now. Um, I haven't done an official check-in. I'll probably do that a little bit, uh, later today before I get back on the road. But, yeah, still, still enjoying the book. Um, there's a lot of, like, inner workings that the Count is taking care of. There's, like, a lot of, um, I don't know, just, like, family stuff going on, um, with, like, the Morsefs. And, I don't know, some some of it, I, I'll admit, has just been a little um, dry. Um, I've struggled a little bit to get through some, some sections in these last couple hundred pages. But it's kind of picking back up, and there will be, like, a scene or two that really, like, sucks me back in. But anyways, we're going to keep on going. I'm going to sit here and listen to the audiobook for a little while and follow along. Because I, I do like the narrator. So, anyways, I will uh, check in with you here in a bit. Okay. 
Okay, hello everyone. It has been a couple of days. I really didn't do much reading this week while I was at work. Um, we've got four weeks left of school and I'm just kind of exhausted and whenever I get off work I will just like go home and kind of go into brainless mode and play games on my phone or watch TV. Um, so uh, today is Thursday. I have got the afternoon off. So I'm going to spend some time reading to the end of Count of Monte Cristo. So I am on page, let me see, 827. And so <clears throat> I've got a little bit more than 200 pages left. And um, I, I'm kind of ready to get through this one. Like, I, I understand the story. It's, it's good, but I know with like a lot of books that were, you know, when they were published, they were serialized, you know, the authors just wanted to keep them going because, um, you know, partially because they were getting paid. And so, you know, the longer the story goes, the more money they make. Um, and I don't want to say that that's the only reason, but I, I kind of feel like that's the case a little bit here. Um, I don't know. I'm getting a little bogged down with this one, and I'm kind of ready to just be done with it. And some of that might be that I'm really ready to jump into Golden Sun um, and, you know, just kind of move past this. Hi, Bobby. I'm going to nudge the camera. So, anyways, I don't know. I'm, this is, it's, it's good, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of over it. So, but anyways, we're going to sit here and we're going to read some more and get as far as we can. So I will check back with, check back with you shortly. It is Friday night and I just got back from teaching in Arkansas. I was on the road for five hours today and I listened to a lot of The Count of Monte Cristo. <clears throat> I got home and I have four chapters left. So I'm not going to be able to do anything until I complete this book. So... Anyways, um, yeah, okay, so the ending has gotten, I mean, this last section has gotten way more interesting, um, and things are actually, like, coming together, and, you know, the conclusion is actually happening, and it's kind of interesting how that's all occurred, so, um, Fernand Mondego ended up shooting himself, and there was, um, like, a trial with Benedetto, and... Yeah, uh, and then, like, Valentine was poisoned, and, um, it, it's just, like, so much has happened in the last part of this, last part of this book. I mean, all of the Count's plans are coming to fruition. Okay, and then, um, um, Mad, Mr. Villefort's wife, um, was accused of, like, poisoning all the people in the Villefort estate or the house and Villefort was like gonna basically he basically was like I don't want to see you like being hung but um you're gonna gonna have to like be punished for what you've done and I'm gonna leave you and I don't want to see you again and he comes back and she has poisoned herself and her their child and so but whenever Dantes, like, reveals himself to Villefort, like, Villefort takes him up and he's like, look what you've done. Like, this is what your vengeance has wrought. And it's a little too much for Dantes because, you know, the child died. And so, anyways, whoa, like, kind of a, a wild ending here. So, anyways, four more chapters. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to finish this book. Done. Okay, so that's it. We finished The Count of Monte Cristo. Hello. So, I'm not gonna lie. It has been like two weeks since I finished this book. And I don't know. I just, uh, well, to preface this, I am not gonna come on here and just like, just totally disparage a classic book. Like, I understand why this is a classic. I understand why it has lasted as long as it has. But I, yeah, I kind of I kind of got through this book and threw it back on the shelf and out of sight, out of mind. 
Ugh, and I hate to be that way, but ultimately, do I have respect for this book? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I get that it was written at a time where it was serialized, and so the longer that it was drawn out, the more the author got paid. But I also don't want to say that in the way that it's like the middle part was just total trash. But this this book, while it is an excellent revenge story and the plot and the concept and the overarching idea of the book is really intriguing, there... There's a lot of this book that is super slow burn. And so there was like 300 pages in the middle of this where I was just like, come on. The last 100 pages was excellent. And it's just so, it's such a bummer to me whenever I get into a book this size for me to lose that interest like three quarters of the way through the book and just I'm um, I'm basically having it on audiobook to get through it. And there's some details that kind of get lost for me because I'm thinking about my jobs or whatever and maybe that's on me. Maybe that's on me. Maybe that's not the book's fault and that's okay. You know, I, I'm totally willing to accept that I am not the greatest, most intellectual reader in the world. But that was just my reading experience of this. The first 300 pages of this book was incredibly engaging, incredibly intriguing. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um... Whenever he, whenever the Count of Monte Cristo, Edmond Dantes, actually gets out of the Chateau d'If and he goes and starts actually like laying his plans and he's Sinbad the sailor, but he's also the Count of Monte Cristo and he's befriending, you know, the children of his enemies. The first part of that was really intriguing. And then there's just like this totally dead space where they're talking about, you know, their loans and their money and just different kinds of things that I would just kind of be like, you know what, I really want Taco Bell. I mean, it's just like, I couldn't stay engaged. And then you hit the section with Valentine and how she communicates with her uncle, grandfather. I don't remember right off the bat, but anyways, you know, the paralytic that, um, you know, he sits there and he has to blink his eyes and different things. I thought those scenes were written so well, so, like, engaging, so cool to, like, read that. Totally engaged in those scenes. And then they, like I said in one of my other videos, and look, I'm, I'm just going to say I was not trying to be a jerk about the French accent. I was just really tired one night, and it was right after I had finished the book, and I had been listening, it on, listening to it on audio on YouTube and the narrator, God love this human for reading this entire book and putting it up. And it's a LibriVox recording, which is in the public domain. They say that all the time. And I'm, you know, I'm sure that's for a good reason, but the, the gentleman that was reading this just had just had the same cadence for all of the dialogue. You know, and it's a very, like, I want to say stereotypically French, like, accent and cadence for everything. And so after a couple of hours of that, I was just like, I, I just would totally zone out. And so anyways, so there was that. And yeah, so like that, that you just listened to was a commentary more on the narration than the story, but it was just like the whole book is like, and I will give you a thousand francs, and, and I will do the, the, the thing, and then I will help you, and, and then we will go to the Louvre, and what whatever it was, but it was just that cadence 
the whole time. And so when you listen to that for like seven or eight hours by the, you know, by the time you get to the end of it, it's just like, my goodness, your inflection, please, for the love of all that is good and holy, please just give me a sentence that doesn't follow that cadence. And so that's probably an unfair criticism of the book, but that's just, that's, was just my experience of it. And then you get to the last hundred pages and all this stuff is happening and, you know, Valentine's poisoned and, you know, um, Monsieur Dongrau is like thrown into prison and Luigi Vampa is the caretaker and it's basically like, oh, you want like a slice of bread? Well, give me like half a million francs. And I mean, he's getting what he deserves and it's all coming together. And that part, I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. There's some actual, like, revenge in just not talking about our finances. So, sorry, that's very, um, very aggressive. But, gosh, there was so much of this book that was just talking about investments and finances. And and I get why it's in there. I get why it's in there. I, I'm sorry, but... There was just, yeah, there was like the the 500 to 800 page range of this was just like, it just was. And then, so the ending, spoilers, but so the ending, you get to this, you know, everything's been wrapped up very well and Edmund Dantes falls in love with basically one of, one of his servants, which for me, I, okay, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest here. I, uh, I didn't pick up on that at any point prior in the book. And so maybe it was set up very well. Um, and that's great. If, if like you got it and you picked it up and you were hoping for, oh my gosh, I hope Edmund Dantes it's, ends up with this cat. <laughs> Whatever, like, great. But for me, I was kind of like, okay. And so he falls in love with one of his servants and they get on a boat and they sail into the sunset. And his adopted child is like, yeah, good for him. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Whenever I finished this book, I was just kind of like, good. And some of that might be that I was just, I was really ready to get to Golden Sun and this book just lost me about halfway through. Uh, it it did and um, I, I have seen a video on YouTube of somebody that had a negative opinion of, of this book and got torn to shreds. You know what? <laughs> Tear me shreds. Go for it. I'm like, please fill up my comment section with what you just didn't get it. That's fine. I don't care. But, no. I, I I would say, ultimately, this is a three to four star book. There, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I think that so much of, like, the high points of this novel, they work. They do. It's, it's really good. The story as a whole is timeless. There was just so much of the slow burn of this book that that just nearly lost me. And I was just like, Can we please just get to what matters. And some of that also comes from me having seen the movie. I love the movie with Jim Caviezel and Guy Pearce. I, I love that movie. And some of the things that I really loved about this movie are not in this book. And... That's not the book's fault. Uh, you know, this was obviously written first. But this was not as swashbuckling, adventurous, treasure island, whatever, as I expected it to be. Uh, it, it, the first part of it is very, you know, it's very similar to the movie. And then you get to, like, the whole section where he's infiltrating the aristocracy. And it's very different in the book from the movie with Jim Caviezel and Guy Pierce. And there was just so, like I said before, 
It was just so much discussion of, but I will give you a million francs to do this. And, and then once you get done, you can go bet on a horse and you can, I will give you 50,000 francs to do that. I, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm sorry. 500, 600 pages into this, I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm so ready for Golden Sun. So that's going to do it for this week, y'all. I'm sorry. I know it's really bad form to like, you know, dump on a classic, but I don't know. The, the Count of Monte Cristo for me was, it was a three star. It, it, I, it's fine. It's, it's, it's good. I understand. I appreciate it. I respect it. I respect Alexandre Dumas. Um, I get it, but it's not a book that I am desperate to reread. And that's going to do it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for all of your views, all of the subscribers. Subscriber count is going up, slowly but surely. Um, my Priory of the Orange Tree review is up, and it has done poorly. So, if you would go watch that, I would greatly appreciate you. Thank you for all of your support, all of your comments. We've got some more fun stuff coming up. In fact, Justin, my brother, is done with uh, Assassin's Quest, so we're actually going to film our Fire Farseer um, trilogy tomorrow. And we're going to eat some fire noodles. That's why I've kind of tripped over my words. It's uh, We're going to call it uh, Fire Noodles and Farseer. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to talk about that whole trilogy of Realm and the Elderlings. Realm of the Elderlings, sorry. So we're going to talk about that. And then um, I have just finished Golden Sun. And that review will be coming out. And so, spoiler alert. I've got to start Morning Star like immediately. So that that is all coming up. Uh, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you, and until next time, happy reading. <laughs>